Big Drive Energy Winners Circle Monday here on a Monday in late March. We're going to talk about some March Madness. Uh, we're going to talk about the Valspar Championship. Peter Malnati getting a huge victory for his career. Nelly Corda winning on the LPGA Tour. We're also going to talk a little DP World Tour. Mitchell's got some uh, DP World Tour fun facts for us. He's he's dug into the archives of the DP, and he's ready to roll with some, with some fun facts. We also have a new segment called Blacklisted. We are going to be adding, <clears throat> we have one player on it. We had to start with a player on it. Now we're going to add another one. It's basically just a guy that we're never putting our money on again. This list will get very long very quickly because it can be big with our, our uh, betting card each week. And we're also going to do a weekly mulligan of the week. I have multiple options to choose from this week. But we'll see if maybe some of them make the cutting room floor. Then we can discuss. All right, let's tee it up. March Madness is upon us. Well, well give me your overall take on the first week, first four days of games. Because really, there's only one double digit seed left in the entire Sweet 16. Yeah, it was definitely a little bit more boring <clears throat> than I, not boring. There was, there's always some good games. It's March Madness, but there was definitely not as much drama. Um, as anticipated, I know that Auburn wrecked everybody's bracket. Uh, Auburn was like the, uh, the Ken Palm diaper dandy Dick Vitale voice. Uh, they were like the, you know, the quintessential middle seed favorite. Weren't they, a, were they a five or a four, four, four seed? And they just looked like dog shit. Lost to um, Yale. Yeah. <laughs> well, dude, and that's the shitty thing is like, you got Yale, you got Oakland, you got a, a few of these uh cinderella looking teams they go to the round of 32 and lose by like 40 points so it's either a testament to how good the top end is because like yukon's a wagon houston's a wagon purdue looks great you know there's a lot of very good teams but it's like we need a little bit more fight out of these young dudes like the gulky the is it brad gulky is, it, is his name brad um, jack jack I think, jack i think it's jack gulky uh, that shit was electric as hell. Dude, like, did you see how quick he got an NIL deal? He was filming a fucking State Farm commercial in the, the next hotel the yeah. next morning. Well, so he told the story. His buddies, like, right after the game, they basically <laughs> said, we'll just set you up an email and start fielding NIL deals for you. And within 10 minutes after the game, they were all fielding his NIL deals for him. And he was recording, like, uh, was it Progressive or some insurance bullshit? But either way, he's getting a bag. Um, so good for him. I mean, all he does is shoot threes, which I love, just firing from the hip. And he even said, like, it almost gives me Jamal Ver Murray vibes because I've always thought that Jamal is better at shooting contested, like, off-balance shots than, like, wide-open shots. And uh, Golke, he said in an interview this morning that he actually feels like he's a much better shooter off-balance with a guy in his face than wide-open. Yeah, there's guys that just have that that he's got that dog in him. Yeah, oh yeah, he's got and like when he said we're not a Cinderella, that shit gave me fucking goosebumps. I was like, that's that is electric. And then they went out and then and they go out and lose to an eleven. Get state. rolled. NC State is legit though. DJ Burns is junior is my favorite player in this Dude, fucking he tournament. Is, he is awesome. He's the Audi crooks of men's basketball. <laughs> <laughs> like the those two are just taking the taking March by storm. Um, but actually, oh, what was I going to say about DJ Burns? Oh, th so this is my going back to last week, the reverse, reverse psychology. <laughs> Get, follow me here. So NC State, everybody says when a, a team like that runs the table in the conference tournament and goes on to win, they always shit the bed in the tournament. So then everybody was on that. So then I was like, so everybody's on them because in an, in a bubble, they're hot. NC State's a hot team after winning the ACC tournament, blah, blah, blah. But then everybody goes to the other side of, oh, they're actually going to choke because everybody's on them. So then I reversed that again, and then I was on NC State 
like in one of my brackets, I had got him going to I think the Elite Eight. Oh, so so I was I was on the right side of that one for as many of the the picks I was on the wrong side of. NC State was one of my my dark horses to make it a a long way. Yeah, they the one bracket I do you have to fill it all out, obviously. Like an oh no shit, but it's like a Excel spreadsheet run by an older dude, super old school. My my kind of shit, my kind of uh, old school gambling, but he does let you pick a sleeper team and so a 9 through 16 seed and you get extra points every time they win a game and nc state was my sleeper team oh okay and so they're the only team that what? has made it this far that was a quote-unquote sleeper of a 9 through 16 seed so i feel pretty good about that although i believe i had can maybe kansas and auburn in the final four in that one so i got okay. fucked. i got fucked by marissa zags I didn't realize Gonzaga nine straight years in the Sweet 16. That's impressive. That is longevity. And they <laughs> actually consistently outperform. I think they've outperformed their seed in the NCAA tournament more than like anybody in the last two decades. Yeah, Mark Few's got, he's got it, the life. But I don't, oh, 100%. But I almost feel like Gonzaga is better off being a higher seed than like a, or a lower seed, however you want to look at it. I feel like they're better off as like a three to six seed rather than a, a one or a two seed. Well, there's certain then they get the target on their back and then yeah. they, they play like shit. That's like Michigan State's like that. Yeah. I mean, they ended up losing, obviously, to UNC, but they were ahead. They won their game of 64 really easily. And Mich yeah, Michigan State is an eight to nine to 10 is like dangerous as hell. Michigan State is a two. You're like, oh, they're losing week one. But this has been kind of the year for... Right now, I mean, it it was all chalk yesterday. Yeah, every favorite won, and I think in the the round of thirty two, I think favorites were eleven and five against the spread, even. So they're not only winning, they're covering. Um, but it's <clears throat> the one year that it seems like to me that more than any other year that it's the teams that you normally plan on choking are not are actually winning games. Purdue, Kansas, Kansas, Arizona's Can Kansas lost, but. Kansas lost to a Gonzaga team that was like good. It was not like Kansas lost in the first round. Yes. You know, they're other than, you know, Auburn and what was the other upset? I mean, who did North Carolina State beat as this the eleven? They beat Oakland. No, who did they oh. beat in the first round? The oh, six seed. Oh, it was BYU. Like Yeah, come see, on. BYU, yeah. Sh like Utah State, BYU, no good basketball's ever been played in Utah. Let's just be real here. Um, a few teams that I have to call out because they absolutely hose me. Uh, St. Mary's pissed down their leg. They were I another called that Grand they, Canyon. That was they were that was one of those everybody's on Grand Canyon, so they can't win, and then they win. Well, yeah, see, but that's the problem. Like when teams win that are supposed to win, that's an issue. Because uh, it's this is March. We need fucking upsets here. Um, another one that really hosed me. I had Oregon. They take it to double OT with Tennessee and then just lay down. And let let fucking Tennessee pet their belly like puppy dogs. They were so gassed, made no changes. Who's that dude? Qu Cuisinard, I think from Oregon. Dude's a ball. Absolutely clutched up like in the first overtime, and then in the second overtime, it legitimately looked like he wanted to lay down on the floor. Like he was so out of gas. And it's like, dude, get the guy out of the game. He's they were throwing up dog shit, and I can. You and I actually sat at the bar, got a little tuned up. What was it, Saturday night? And watched, uh, it was Michigan State, uh, which we were both on. Terrible bet on our, our part, no surprise. We were both on Michigan State covering four and a half against UNC. Um, and what did I tell you? I was, they were down, Michigan State was down by like six. And just based on vibes, I was like, this is going to be 12 or 14 here in like a minute. And it was. And UNC just pulled away. Because you can tell when a team starts to panic and they start throw like you can see the one desperation shot that the underdog takes. And if that doesn't go in, the momentum is just throttled. Like they give up a couple buckets, they go down, shoot kind of a desperation shot. If that doesn't go in, they're losing by eight or 10 more points than they're down right now. Yeah, the, the momentum in basketball in general is insane. But yes. when you get to March, it's even like... Michigan State was up 12 within the first five minutes of that game. I was like, oh, we cashed this dog big time. And they lose by, what, 20? Yeah. 16? It was just a... At one point, 
UNC was like plus 175 to bet on the money line. Um, Oregon lost to Creighton watching their offense is awful. Only had one play. Oh, did they lose to Creighton? Yeah. Oregon did? Oh, I thought they played Tennessee. My bad. Yes, they lost to Creighton. Um, my my B. But uh, yes, actually Creighton is a very legitimate program. Like they they look pretty fucking good. So now this is where the the good games start to like come in. Like the I feel like the first weekend is just purely volume. Like it's just so many games to watch, so much action you have out there that that's what makes it fun. But the second weekend is where you're getting like actually like good quality games. Like Tennessee Creighton is going to be a great game. Honestly, I don't see one game Marquette NC State could get out of hand, but the way NC State looks, you never know. Um, Houston and Duke is going to be a phenomenal game because Duke looks fucking great right now. North Carolina, I, I think, is going to roll Alabama. Iowa State, Illinois, sneaky good game. Illinois um, is another one of those teams that's kind of broken out of the choke shell this yeah, year. Yeah, They're, they've kind of – well, I don't think they've been to a Sweet 16 in like 20 years or, and they, or more. Yeah, and they had like Io DeSumo and Kofi Coburn. Yeah, isn't Kofi Coburn, isn't he like sick offensively? He used to. I mean, he's – Oh, not, this was back in the day. This yeah. is, who's their dude that this year is like super good on offense? Um – Oh fuck! This is such. He a has game. some serious uh, allegations against <laughs> oh, him. Oh yes, yes, they're they're fucking uh, they're not good people over in Illinois, from what I hear. Um, Terrence Shannon Jr. Yes, and he's playing very well. And I yes, I've heard of those allegations. And what a bad dude! Do not condone that kind of shit. Um, and then UConn's probably going to beat San Diego State by like twenty five because UConn's a wagon. So real quick before we. Uh, before we get on, oh, and fuck New Mexico, by the way. God, they just laid a complete egg. I had them going, I had them beating Arizona in the Sweet 16. Damn. To get to the, I had them going deep. I took some flyers. That's March, you know? You have to. Yeah, you have to take flyers. Um, one other flyer, I had Oregon going to the Elite Eight. Um, I have, I had Illinois playing Washington State. I thought Iowa State was going to choke. Um, I had St. Mary's over Michigan State, and it's North Carolina, Alabama. Anyway, I won't I won't keep hashing over my bracket here, but let's just give a national championship pick now that you've seen what's happened, what's transpired over the first weekend. I actually believe in Houston now. Wow. Like, I did not. Like, good one seed. I think the games get to be when these better teams play each other, like you're talking about. They get to be a more of a defensive, a rock fight. Yeah, yeah it's not like this eighty. You know, Purdue scored one hundred and six points yesterday. Like it's going to get to those, uh, the old Loyola games where it's like fifty five to fifty four with like two or three minutes left. And Houston's that's, built for that. shit. Exactly. Yeah, Houston's a team that's built for that. Like teams like Alabama are. But not UConn is also for built for that. UConn is built for that. Nobody's repeated in like seventeen years though. So I, I'm a little. But their coach. What do you think about their coach? In golf, it's funny. So relating it to golf, you it's never really like this in a golf tournament because you're playing against the course. But there was a point in that first game, they were up 30, and Hurley is Danny Hurley is like freaking out on the kids. Yeah. And they asked him, they were like, What is the deal with like what why are you, you know, basically they didn't say this, but they're like, Why are you freaking out about, you know, being up 30? And he's like, This isn't championship basketball. And so it's interesting to look at a sport where they're just blowing a team out. Yeah. And they should have. But he is having a Michael Malone rage timeout freak out on his team who's up 30. But it's because he wants more. It's like if you're, you know, Tiger Woods in the early 2000s, you're leading the U.S. Open by 10. And you don't birdie one of the last three holes. or You don't birdie the 18th when you have a six footer. You're probably still pissed off. And that's what greatness is. And that's why, like, UConn still, if I had gun to my head, mortgage on the line I'd, I'd take uconn right now yeah but teams like Houston, i still don't believe in purdue they could hoist the national championship and i'll fucking still, still not think believe. they're frauds yeah uh, same with arizona i just don't think they got it in them um but yeah houston looks good i that houston duke game is going to be a banger yeah 100 percent. brendan uh know this is a golf pod but shout out to the avs hell of a comeback yesterday mckinnon is winning mvp and so is Jokic. 100 percent, dude what a you were at the game what a comeback that shit was electric as hell i've never seen a team 
uh, more comfortable being down goals. And then they, when they get one, especially against a team like the pens who have just been bad this year, especially in the later half of the year. Uh, but they just turned it on and there was no stopping them. Like I missed they what they score like 30 seconds into overtime like oh yeah it was just uh, immediate but being a colorado sports fan right now we own the winter sports yes we have basically we, we are be- winter like, <clears throat> we is have that the champ snow uh it, is that winter is coming. Win- okay well that's winter is coming and we are gonna own it i just made a marketing thing for the nuggets and the abs like winter is coming in the middle of like they should post that shit in october when the broncos are fucking have two wins and Everybody wants to jump off the nearest bridge. They should just be like, winter is coming with the Nuggets and Avs logo. Yeah, we, yes, we do own the winter. And like April and May is going to be so electric, hopefully into June. But uh, yeah, it's it's so weird growing up in Denver because we always looked so forward to fall because of the Broncos and like them making a run. Now it's completely done a 180 where it's like, I love fall. Fall's my favorite season, said a million times. Uh, but I don't look forward to sports until like January, like when it's just nuggets, abs, nuggets, abs, basketball, hockey, basketball, hockey. That's my shit. Yeah. We have two MVPs in this city. I I want to know when the last time that happened is. I'm sure it's been fairly recent with, I don't know, dude, professional sports. Like I, if you consider, um, baseball, all all four major sports having like the same calendar season, having an MVP, but yeah, I think it's very likely going to be in Denver, and then if we if we have two parades, this podcast probably officially ends in June or July of 2024. Like yeah, it, it's all over. It was one 2020. Of us, one of us is 2020, not- huh? One. Who was? It? Oh, let's guess. Let's guess. What sports was it in 2020? Well, let me make sure this is correct. Hold on. Um, I'm thinking it would be uh, NBA and NHL. NBA 2020. Oh, I don't that. think that's right though. Hold on. Well, so that 2020 was, was COVID year. Yeah, I was gonna say it was bubble year, correct? Um, did LeBron win MVP that year? That hold on, give me a second. I Wait, think I maybe, misspoke. Um, oh, fucking Marissa's. We we need a fact check over here. We, <laughs> I'm looking. Hold I know. On. I'm just messing with you. Uh, I really can't remember honestly the last time it was done. Speaking of champions, also real quick, shout out Caitlin Clark. Shout out the Iowa Hawks. Well, tonight. don't say speaking of champions. They're not. Well, I'm they're sorry. Big speaking champions. of MVPs. Speaking okay. of M- thank you. Caitlin Clark is MVP of women's college basketball. She's the MVP of women's basketball in the history of all That's time. That's true. She changed she the is, game. She she's Steph curry this shit. She is Tiger Woods in this shit. Yeah. Like so she has single-handedly changed the women's game. Um, that chick from Holy Cross, giving her the people's elbow right to the chin, straight to jail. She needs to be incarcerated for that. And anybody that says that wasn't intentional, you are... Well, I don't even know if you're watching the same game because that was intentional as the day is long yeah it was if it if it would have been any other player it wouldn't even really be talked about i mean it's still intentional but yeah and you you, could just tell that chick just had like a public enemy number one looking face like she wanted to be the villain yeah they wanted to go down literally fighting against (laughs) iowa and they still lost by 20 iowa's got west virginia tonight the mountaineers the lady mountaineers the lady is there a female term for mountaineer mountainette the mountain nets the mountain nets no <laughs> marissa's just shaking her head like, Fuck. I'm just I, was trying. A, I was a mountaineer we're okay a lady mountaineer fair enough we don't say that we just say we're mountaineers oh, okay mountaineers. we're just trying to give you your due mountaineers it is wait uh, ladies we're basketball players um did you find that mvp stat or no who who did it say oh bass okay oh that's that checks out. Yeah, yeah that, that yeah, that could be correct. I Did he win a t- MVP in 2020? In 2020? Yeah. yeah. Okay. No. Oh. I right. would never I, Technically it's not the same city but same state. Yeah. Yeah, that checks out. That's good. Yeah, I think you got it. Damn. Look at that. I, my I hate my mind for this but I just automatically go to like Boston sports. I'm thinking yeah. like Well, cuz Brady won Celtics. So many. And, well, I'm thinking like Celtics, Bruins or Patriots, you know, Celtics, blah blah blah. Yeah. Even though that that city hasn't won a championship since what 2019. Feels like forever for some yeah, of these people. Yeah, they they're never gonna win another one. So they can, bro. The Celtics, I 
The Celtics aren't even going to make the finals again this year, I think. Is that a hot take? No. I it's, I think the they, East I think the East is just a clusterfuck and they're kind of a joke. Like they're they're not a joke, but their their win loss record in the regular season, they're like that ultimate like regular season team that I don't think can really pull it together in the playoffs. Like, has Tatum ever come in big in the playoffs? Has Jalen Brown ever done it? Has Porzingis ever done it? None of them have done it. Like Al Horford has been there, but I don't, he's never won a championship either. So yeah, I, I they're like, like the kings of like getting there but not being able to get all the way there. Well, they're like the the Nuggets before. They got through last year, so I'm not going to count them out. I think that's Nug- true. Nuggets, Celtics, NBA Finals would be just. I just think they incredible. get so much hype during the regular season; it's hard to sustain it for that long. Like they they're talked about so much, they're in the the headlines so much. Similar to the Lakers, like I mean, the Lakers in the years past have done it, but they just get so much hype. Like I think it is truly harder to win in those big markets because there's so much pressure and so much like. The Nuggets winning was just like a, a happy surprise, you know, like uh, like an oops baby. Like, you know, you didn't think it was going to happen, but it happened and you're stoked about it. Um, but in L.A. or Boston, it's like you have expectations of winning New York City. They don't expect to win shit because they've just been terrible at everything for a decade plus now. So, uh, but yeah, the big markets are tough to win in. Yeah, no doubt. Because here, that's it's why like, the Maple Leafs haven't won a fucking Stanley Cup in fifty years. Here we have like little man syndrome. There they have whatever else you call it. They, they have hubris. They have they they drive big trucks. They think they're big tough guys for sure. Yeah. All right, let's get into a little bit of golf and our winner's circle Monday. So we're going to start it off. Uh, first of all, I want to tell you guys about our friends over at Bet365. It's never ordinary at Bet365. Use the code All City in all caps. When you sign up and you get to choose between two offers of a first bet safety net, $1,000, meaning you get to bet up to $1,000. If you don't hit it, you get another chance at it in a bonus bet. Take another bet. You know, If you go one for two, you get all of your money back, and then you can start your account with that. Uh, or you can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets to use on golf. That's what we do all of our betting on Bet365. Golf the each ways. We're going to keep going. We're going to keep plugging away at the mountain until we have a winner. We'll give you out our uh, surely to win picks on Wednesday's episode. Um, but those are the two offers you get in golf. Like we talked about, the each way splits your bet into two and doubles your wager. So you get a chance to win on them winning the tournament or you get a chance to win on them placing in the tournament, choosing between one through five, one through eight, one through 10, one through 12. Um, where we might stretch that out again at some point based on our current record. Um, but must be 21 plus and physically located in Colorado. Please gamble responsibly. If you're someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call or text 1-800-GAMBLER. also want to tell you about our great friends over at Coors Light. We, I, consumed a few Coors Lights yesterday. I need a moment to chill at Ball Arena. Abs were down for nothing. It was a slog. I was like, can we credit Coors Light for the Avs comeback? Oh, absolutely we can. Because I was about to leave. No no fooling. My kid was asleep the whole third period. Uh, it was 4 nothing. I was like, hey, it's, let's just might as well fucking beat the traffic, go home. Avs roofed one. I was slightly back in. I was like, let's stay until I finish my beer. They scored a second one right before the You're second the period back. ended. I was all the way back. and. You just kind of knew right now they just have that look in their eye, especially at Ball Arena. And Coors Light was the one that saved me from leaving the game yesterday because if I wouldn't have had to finish my fucking $18 tall boy (laughs) as a principal, worth every dollar, I might have left the arena, but I didn't. So when you need a moment to chill, drink a Coors Light. Coors Light, celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Real, you can, qu- real you quick. can get that delivered straight to your Ooh. door with Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com forward slash DNVR. Nothing better than a little Coors Light sitting on your doorstep. Uh, anybody that doesn't finish their drink at a sporting event, that's like disrespectful on so many different levels. Like, first of all, you're there to have a good time. Second of all, that shit costs $20. You know, Marissa's like smirking because she got this is she's a you're a habitual an offender. I do it all the time. You just drink half a beer. I don't even drink half. So you're wasting money. Yes. (laughs) Wow. Would you rather have a shopping addiction or just drink a quarter of a 
twenty dollar beer. I have neither. Well, I have one. I have the drinking. <laughs> it's because it's too much. I'm too like I'll I'll get fucked up. I can't have the whole thing. That's the point. <laughs> what What do you do? You just like I have literally never once in my life with alcohol been like, yep, I'm good right here. <laughs> That's literally yep, this me. This is all my the- spot. I'm fine. I'm done. I, yep. I don't have like a good, I don't know if this mic is all the way on. I don't have a good gauge. So, me neither. So it's either I'm all in or I'm not. So me too. I, I yeah. tend to like to stay on the I'm not side. Oh, um, that's where we differ. I am all in until I go to bed. <laughs> yeah. But Marissa, the other end usually ends up with like a black eye. She can't find yeah, her phone. See, I don't, I'm not that much of a problem. Yeah. That might be. That's fair. I mean, you respect your, you know, your limits and you respect them. I respect that. Thanks. I can appreciate that. Yeah. All right. Are we, what, what golf are we talking about? Let's what? talk about a little Nelly Corda, first of all. Okay. So this is, Nelly Corda is obviously one of the most talented players out of the Top United five. States of all time. Oh, yeah. From, from the United from States. The, yeah. On Top the PGA three, Tour. So she has won back to back or two of her last three starts. And in between her last start and this start, she took seven weeks off, three and a half weeks off golf completely, then three and a half weeks of just practicing, comes back and wins in a playoff over Ryan O'Toole. Oh, Ryan O'Toole. Bro, she was a a big break uh, member like circa 2011. She's been around for a while. She was like one of my favorite players on the big break. Do you remember her? I don't. I don't think I do. Yeah, she was on like Big Break Ireland, I want to say. Um, She was on a couple of them, but Ryan O'Toole, that's how I know that name. She's dope. Uh, But Nellie Corda, yeah. Can you imagine? So she's probably made seven or $800,000 between those two wins. And you're like, I'm going to make 400 k take almost two months off work, chill, live my life, enjoy myself, and then I'm going to go win another 400 500K. Like, yeah, that's just how she's just ultimately talented. She, she's she just 25 years old, too. Yeah, that's which is insane. I mean, but I will say a lot of women's golfers, they generally seem like they peak a little earlier than men's golfers. Like a lot of the PGA Tour guys and that maybe not now, um, but back 10, 15 years ago, it felt like dudes didn't really win until like their late 20s, early 30s. But with with women's golf, it feels like if you're 18 or 19 and you're not winning yet. Then you're like a journey woman, <laughs> journey woman, journeyman. Uh, I don't know what term I'm supposed to use there, but you're like a, you're not elite. You know, if you don't come out and win as like a teenager. So Nelly being 25, that's like being like 35 on the PGA Tour, in my opinion. Because I I would love to see. Do they have an average age of the LPGA Tour versus the PGA Tour? Average age of members. Um, because I would bet the LPJ tour has got to be significantly lower than the PGA tour. And maybe also it's because a lot of women don't play, like continue to play professional golf into their forties. Cause there's still quite a few men that do that. Um, are, are we, how are the stats looking over here? Oh yeah. Okay. So we'll see this is from getnux.org professional <laughs> golf statistic. Uh, the average age of a male professional golfer on the PGA Tour is 35.1 years old. The average age of a female professional golfer on the LPGA Tour is 24.4 years old. Yeah. See, how insane is that? Like, you're over the hill. Marissa, you'd be, an, you'd be a grandma on the LPGA Tour right now, and you're 28. Like, that's insane. You're not a grandma, obviously. Um, but the fucking age discrepancy is insane. Like, think about that. Nelly is over the average age on the LPGA Tour. Yeah, that's nuts. And she's barely, it feels like she's barely started her career. Also notched her 10th win, double-digit winner. And she's back in first place in the Rolex women's rankings for Nelly Corda is right now the best female professional golfer. Golfer, I guess you can just, you know, you're yeah. professional in the, on the I entire play. I don't think she's won any majors yet, has she? Do we know this? I Sorry, I keep asking for stats. No, I... Um, I don't I think, think she's won a major yet. I thought she won the major um, where she, this they jump us. into the pond. Uh oh, that's the one in um California. <laughs> Holy shit, we are just killing it with these Nelly Corda stats here. Wow. Uh, I do not think she's won a major. I feel like 
Google should be faster. Than yeah, that. she won a major in 2021. Oh, okay. Um, first major was what is that major called? Because the women have five majors. That one is it's at she won the KPMG Women's PGA Championship. Okay, at Atlanta, Atlanta Athletic Club. Oh hell yeah, 2021. That's a, that's a great venue. Um, okay, so I was wrong. Hand up. Not my first time being wrong, not my last. But, yeah, I love watching Nellie Corda play golf. Talk about, and they always talk about this, like, ladies' golf swings have, generally speaking, on the LPGA Tour, there's, they have so much rhythm and such smooth tempo that it just feels like you can watch it on repeat all day. Like, it almost gets boring because it's so repeatable. Like, that's what I feel like watching women's golf sometimes. I'm like, it almost, I wouldn't say it puts you to sleep. Like, that's a mean way to say it. But you know what I'm saying. Watching them, it's just all so, like, calm. You have, I feel like you have no hotheads on, like, the LPJ Tour. They're all just, like, super low-key, super chill, super smooth with everything they do, and they just go out and shoot crazy numbers. Yeah, they, there's their, like, follow-throughs are so just, like, smooth and, like, complete. <laughs> They're, yeah. they're, it's not like jerky it's not fucking and they're hot. always like on balance you never see them fall off balance like they're like machines they're made made in the lab they just <laughs> they just repeat the same golf swing over and over and over again yeah it's incredible like in all honesty like when i was getting better at golf and uh like a lot of people who are looking to get better at golf i would honestly recommend watching the lpga tour if you're looking at mechanics versus the pga tour does that make sense? Yeah, like if you're trying to watch Scotty Scheffler and recreate what he does, you're gonna be in a pretzel. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna have a you're gonna have hip surgery in a month. I think women's uh, sports are all like that, though. You think so? Yeah. More fundamentally sound. They have to be because they yeah. don't have like the jumping and like basketball. We're That's not true. as fast. They you know, can't jump as high, so everything's more technical. That is true. Like watching Iowa women's basketball team, it's just like a very technically sound well-oiled machine like a lot of these women's golf swings yeah we have a video here of nelly corda once again if you're listening to this podcast audio version we appreciate you give us a thumbs up give us a rating on our show um but we're on youtube every single week mondays and wednesdays so make sure to check us out youtube.com big drive energy golf uh and the funny Number thing about one this in Germany. <laughs> oh no go play it we're good she's well she'll, she'll say it but she says she's aging herself and it's like hilarious to hear that come out of the mouth of a 25 year old. Now she's been on tour for, she's won, she first, her first win was in 2016. So it's been a long time. Yeah, exactly. So um, she won when she was 17. Yeah. So it feels like a long time, but hearing a 25 year old say that as a 30 year old, I'm like, ah, oh, you ain't seen nothing yet. I'm clearly old as shit. All right, let's play this bad boy. A return to number one in dramatic fashion. You always like to make it a nail biter down the end, don't you? Oh, yeah. Uh, I definitely love that. Um, I'm aging myself really quickly out here. A return to number one in. So, number one in the world, shout out Nelly Corda. Um, and just shout out the, the golf they played. Unbelievable conditions, like windy, fighting it. It was not. It was California, correct? Yeah. Like the carmel area like it was pebble beach i have the exact course name oh boy <laughs> had it we are just absolutely fumbling our way through this lpga recap here marissa is nodding her head in approval um we're doing our best palos verdes golf club pa okay in like palo alto is that don't why you keep fucking piling the questions says, on at, literally says from Palos Verdes Golf Club in California. Oh, okay. That I just figured Palos Verdes reminds me of Palo Alto, like in the northern Marissa's laughing. I think it's my pronunciation issue. What? Last night I called black. Mitchell was looking at shoes and I called it <laughs> Onyx. Instead of Onyx. Like the color. And I got roasted. Yeah, it's Onyx. Onyx. Or is it Onyx? Hooked it's on onyx. onyx whatever <laughs> you need to be hooked on onyx all right let's move on um, to <laughs> uh, palos verdes golf club oh, God, is here we go. right outside of rancho palos verdes uh, <laughs> and and also right next to it is palos verdes estates so we really fucking dialed that one in um it's like south of la like near long beach california is just so weird in general like 
I I don't I don't get the landscape out there whatsoever. Also, I'll never understand why they build these golf courses like a block from the ocean. Like this this golf course has like it's not on the ocean. It's just like a little bit ways away from it. Oh, probably Donald, because of the views. Donald Trump owns a golf course right there. Must be a nice spot. <laughs> <laughs> Must be a stand-up spot. All right, we're going to move on to the DP World Tour. Uh, Mitchell, take it away. Okay, so um, the winner this week on the DP World Tour in the Porsche Singapore Open, his name is Jesper Svensson. Um, but that's not who I want to highlight. I want to highlight Kyrdek Effie Barnrat because he's a DP World Tour legend and, honestly, PGA Tour legend, vape legend. Uh, he's into Yeezys. I don't think that has aged well for him because um, he's legitimately – so uh, one of the stories – there's a lot of stories about this dude. I swear he's, like, just a a legend of – like, they call him the John Daly of Asia. Some people do. I I think that's kind of lame. Um, but a few fun facts. I, I read this whole long article on him um, where Alan Shipnook, that fucking crook, crooked-ass – journalist golf journalist went over and like did like a profile on him um in where does he live in thailand um i think in bangkok so he did this whole profile on him and i got a few good tidbits from it so his dad at kirdek Effie barnard let's do a little overview he he has won like eight times on the dp world tour but the reason i want to talk about him is because he has lost almost all of his status at one point like two or three years ago and has been clawing his way back. Like he's been at PJ Tour Monday qualifiers. He's been like working his ass off to get back here. So he eventually got it into the playoff um, over in Singapore, lost in the playoff, but still a, a second place finish for him is awesome. Um, but so I read this whole uh, article on him. And so Kyrdek's dad owned an ice company um, in Singapore, which apparently is like, a monopoly because it's so hot there that they can't like keep ice. So I guess ice is like a massive commodity over there. So they were all loaded. And then when um, he was loaded as in like a lot of money, <laughs> not like hammered, maybe they're, they're hammered too. But uh, so then when he got into golf, Kyrdek, um come to find out, which is not his original name, but I'll get to that. Uh, so when he got into golf, his dad completely like gave up his job that like he owned the company, but he was working like running it. He just left his company. Basically he was still owned it, but left the company to help him, his son improve at golf. And like when he, I guess when he was out in the rain practicing, his dad would just stand there and hold the umbrella over his head. Like, Damn, it's just or when it was dedication. Over, yeah. So his dad dedicated like his entire basically professional life to his son which obviously is paid off because his son is super successful. Um, but then the ice company went tits up. <laughs> they, they filed for bankruptcy oh, no. in like 05 because his dad left his job um, and wasn't running it. So it went bankrupt. Um, and so the family like lost everything, had to sell everything. And so I guess when like bad things like this in your life happen uh, over in Thailand, you go, so Kyrdek went to a... Um, a Buddhist temple and spent a week fasting and praying with monks for an entire week at a Buddhist temple to like maybe get rid of the bad energy that made their ice company go bankrupt. Um, and there he changed his name. So I guess Thai people, <laughs> Thai people, they, I guess it's very common in that uh, area of the world to change your name, to change your fortune. Like, if you feel like you've had bad luck with your current name, you just change your name. Damn. Yeah. So his original name, I wrote it down, and it's it's a mouthful. Like, this is going to be, I it's going to be so bad. His name was Anujit, A-N-U-J-I-T, Anujit, in, what do you think? Anujit? Yeah, maybe Anujit? you don't pronounce the J, but the last name is Hir Unra Ten... To not na corn. <laughs> Here, I can't even like get it out in one. It's H I R U N R A T A N A K O R N. Like, you look at that word and just tell me the first thing. Like, try to read that. 
Here not to non corn. <laughs> so that was his original name. So he like renamed himself the Barn Rat. Like he gave himself Affy Barn Rat. So that's a, I th- I f- almost feel like that's why he embraces that name because he's like, yeah, I picked that shit and people like it. But he actually said too that he enjoys like the PJ Tour crowds more because they're more like into his style and they like appreciate him and his vaping and shit. Um, but he's also like a big car collector, has a bunch of Ferraris. He he kept a separate condo. He lives in one house, kept a separate condo just to keep all of his clothes so his wife didn't see it. <laughs> he kept a completely separate apartment just for his shoe collection and all of his clothes and shit. What a legend. Um, we actually have a picture. Um, Marissa's going to pop this up. For those of you on the YouTube, you got to take, take a peek at this, yes. this fucking guy. The man is a legend. Like... Everything about him, thick boy, I can appreciate that. His swing is pretty unique. Um, but have you ever heard of the the tie spinner, the little like pitch shot, the chip shot that's like taken TikTok by storm? No, I am not. So I was honestly hitting the tie spinner before it was like a... <laughs> is I it can, the Migs spinner? Yeah, yeah, it's the Migsy spinner. Um, you put like, you put the ball off the outside of your back foot and you basically pick the club straight up you take like a, a sand wedge or a lob wedge because you want loft to create spin and you de off the absolute shit out of it. You put it off your off the outside of your back foot and you will just like pick your hands up and drop the club on the back of the ball. And it comes out like super, super low, but it has all this action on it. And I guess a lot of the Thai guys grew up hitting it because it would get you through the fringe because it's so spongy and would like grab your ball. So instead of putting... Like that was kind of like their version of the Texas wedge okay. as a tie spinner. So you can actually see there's some videos on the internet, on the interwebs of Cure Deck hitting these tie spinners that are fucking sick. And they, they're one of those that like skip like a handful of times because they're so low. And then they just like rip back at the last second. So they're a very aesthetically pleasing golf shot. I don't know why I just thought about that, but it was because of Cure Deck. So anywho, shout out to the barn rat uh, finishing second. Hopefully... Fingers crossed he can get some status back on the DP World Tour and then hopefully the PGA Tour. I think he's got some status on the DP World Tour, but I would love to see him back in America because he is an electric factory on the PGA Tour. And whenever he's in the field, he's like a must-watch dude because he's just got a great personality. He hits crazy golf shots. He's not afraid to like take risk on the golf course. So he's one of those guys that even though he's not a big name, he's, I feel like, must-watch PGA Tour play. Yeah, he... There's a story of him, like when you just Google him, there's a story of him and the cover photo is him vaping, just blowing this massive cloud on the golf course. And it says, Kyrdek Afri Bonrat continues to golf so he can buy Yeezys and Ferraris. Yes, that is, that. I think that was the article I read. Um, that is, like, he's just literally living the dream. He is, and I guess his wife is a professor at uh, a call, like the big college in Bangkok. Like, she's very, very smart, has like an MBA and shit. Um, I think she, I th- they maybe met in America because I think she was living in America and now I think she lives over in Singapore. Is it Singapore or is it Bangkok? Singapore is not in Thailand. Or is Singapore? I have no idea. Oh, I don't want to get into geography again. That never goes well for us. <laughs> no. Nope. I think she's either in Singapore or Bangkok. But anywho, I just want to give Kyrdek Afi Barnrat a little bit of credit. Um, and Jesper Svensson. I have no idea who that is. Also want to give a quick shout out to Andy Sullivan. He's one of my all time favorite, like no name DP world tour dudes. Cause he does a lot of like social media shit. He set the course record at uh, this week. He shot 63 in the second round. Um, oh, and they let them wear shorts this week. Cause it's so hot over there. Um, I think it was like 95 degrees and like 80% humidity. Sounds so, awful. Honestly, credit to cure deck because being a, th- fellow thick boy and playing in that kind of weather it honestly makes it harder to play well like i can only imagine how much that dude was sweating and i don't really want to think about it but uh it's definitely hard to play really good golf when you're you're just wet as fuck like you're just soaked the entire time your clothes of course um but yeah great dp world tour event i watched a few highlights it was good shit Good shit. Fucking, we got the cured at Garfield Barnrat story. Now I'm more into watching him for sure. Yeah, his name. We can try to remember his actual name. Enyajit. That was that was a rough scene. All right, let's move on to the PGA Tour. Talk about like a life changing win for Peter Malnati. 
a guy rolls up to a PGA Tour event, Valspar Championship, notably one of the, I'd say, probably top five to ten toughest courses on the PGA Tour circulation. Yeah. It's definitely a, f- uh, a player favorite for the certain type of guy. Like, it is very demanding tee to green. Yeah, and Peter Malnati goes out there, yellow fucking ball, bucket hat, and wins this tournament. And I think... He's basically the grandson in Caddyshack. It, it, the entire event was... There was a different guy leading every single day. And the next day, that guy was snake pit. Playing like shit. Yeah, they went through the snake pit. Um, oh, I think... 16, 17, 18, but... Yeah. Completely shit themselves the next day. So... The weather was terrible. Like, credit to Malnati. He shot four under in the final round to win that event. Like where there was a lot of guys like I tweeted out earlier in the week. I was like, is this the U S open or the fucking Valspar? Cause we had dudes shooting eighties, like 82s. I mean, it is a tough course and I know the conditions are tough, but you rarely see that at a regular PJ tour event, like dudes firing in the low eighties. Yeah. There was just so many funny moments from the week of, obviously we're talking about our betting guys, but like I had son JM and he shot 44 on the back nine on Friday. <laughs> And missed the cut completely. Like, it wasn't even close. There were so many guys. Well, and then Sam Burns at one point had it three under par because he was on your betting card. We'll get to that. Um, And then he was, like, three under through six or seven holes. I'm like, fuck, dude. He's Here he comes for another Valspar win. And then uh, proceeded to shoot, I think, one over in the first round and then never really put it back together. Like, he made the cut, but he did not play well. No, he didn't make the cut. He missed the cut. Oh, he missed the fucking cut? Missed the cut. Uh, Cut. Chopped scissors. Justin Thomas lost seven strokes on the field putting on Friday. So strokes gained turned into strokes lost, and Justin Thomas was a good seven strokes lost on Friday. No shit. That's how bad he putted. Wow. He was miss. He missed a foot. Uh, like he he did a a Josh Seipel and missed a fucking foot and a half, or <laughs> and didn't even sniff the hole. It was it was really it was one of those weeks where. If you're like a an average golf fan and don't entirely care about your Scotty Scheffler's, Victor Hovland's at the top of the leaderboard, like the players last week, but actually just kind of watched guys like struggle just play golf. This yeah. this was the week for it, and Malnati ended up just being the he just won the war of attrition essentially. Like it was Cameron Young almost won. He Again. he bogeyed the 18th hole, and then Malnati ended up making birdie on 17 and finishing 18. We actually have a video here, too, of Keith Mitchell. So I thought Keith Mitchell was going to run away at this thing. Whenever you see a leaderboard full of guys that you don't really know and then a guy that you do, you're like, oh, yeah, this guy's going to win it. Cashmere Keith finished on Saturday the snake pit in seven shots. 3-2-2, two, two, he finished. That Going attack insane. mode here from the fairway. And this is funny because he looks this away. Thing. Well, gets it's fucking dirt in his eye. In his eye from just cans it. <laughs> and then he's just and he looks up. He's like, no way. He didn't even see it. That's electric. He got dirt in his eye, holds it out. He, he still has his caddy for the Yeah, he asked his caddy for the putter so he could go fix his ball mark. Fixes his visor. He is such a villain looking week. dude. Like the way he walks, the way he dresses. And when you haven't won Keith in five Mitchell years and you keep banging out on the door and you see something tour. like this, no to drop, you say to yourself, what a golf shot. Just yeah, and t- he was 10 under par, two strokes clear. Like I thought for sure it was just, I thought it was just over. Um, but going he ended mode. up shooting uh, 77, crisp six over par on sunday oh my god he didn't even finish in the top 20 just fucking absolute disaster uh, one other leg. one other quick note that was cool about the valspar i don't know if you guys all watched it out there if you didn't they let the caddies choose the names on their bibs uh, a lot of people were putting like their twitter twitter handle right yeah i saw one X guy handle. one guy had uh like macy's dad so he was like that's pretty, dope yeah that was, he was pretty proud of his kid fucking bobby mack did you know? Did you see what he had on the back of his jersey or his caddy's jersey? No. Europe 16.5, 11.5 USA. Oh my God, dude. That is, I love that for him, actually. That's electric. Um, also, we just got to say it once again Cameron Young with another second place finish uh, continues to not win. He has the most second place finishes, finishes for a non winner on the PGA Tour, I think, ever. Or he's got to be right up there if it's not top of that list, which is not the list you want to be on. 
Uh, but he now has seven runner-up finishes in the last three years. Um, so that just sucks. Sucks for him. Yeah. That's... And he just can't finish, dude. He puts like you watch him hit range balls and you're like, this guy should win 25 times on the PGA tour. He is one of the most talented dudes, ball striking wise, far and away. And it just goes to show you, you got to have all the elements of your game going because you can't just hit it good enough to win a PGA Tour event. Unless your name's Scotty Scheffler. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, that's true. Uh, a couple other good caddy names here. Luke Donald had now hiring because it was his caddy's last week. Oh, that's fine. So fire. his caddy was going around with now hiring. Um, Joel Damon had leaping cougar. <laughs> Oh, because uh, he's a Washington State guy. No, was it, it was Coops? a name he was given as a kid during his time with a Christian youth organization called the Royal Rangers. <laughs> what? Um, Gary Higo had Higopotamus. Oh, okay. That's pretty dope. I like that. Kevin Kisner had Kiz. Uh, K.H. Lee had Mr. Incredible. Uh, Sounds a little cocky. Josh Teeter had Now. What time is it? N colon O-W for Now. And that's the only time that matters. Sick. Uh, Cardo. Carson Young had the other C Young because of Cameron Young. Oh, Cameron okay. Young is kind of the more. Uh, How sad does that have to be? Like the other C Young hasn't even won on the PGA Tour and you're just that much less recognizable than that dude. Well, there is another funny thing just name wise, phonetics name for the. I don't know if that's even correct. I just know that's a word. Phonetically. For, there was seven Kevins in the <laughs> Valspar Championship. So they did like a Kevin leaderboard. I think five of them missed the cut, but it was just a Kevin. It's a bad week to be a Kevin. <laughs> You yeah. just get a clip of Kevin from the office dumping the whole thing of chili. Like, that was Kevin's at the Valspar. That was Kevin's at the Valspar. Um, one more quick clip we have to play here from Peter Malnati. Super, super uh, emotional post-round interview. This guy hasn't won since 2015. The last time this guy won a PGA Tour event, what do you think the number one, or what song was released in 2015 on November 9th? I'm going to say Dark Horse. Love Yourself by Justin Bieber. That's how long it was. Wow. Since Peter Malnati won the Sanderson Farms. Marissa, um, are you a big Bieber guy? Gal? No. Gal, yes, Gal. Uh, no, you're not. Yeah. You like Biebs? I like Biebs. Did you like early Biebs or late Biebs? Uh, when he hit puberty and his voice changed a little bit, you know, that was kind of the uprising of him, I think. He has a good voice. Okay. Yeah, he's very talented. The number one song uh, in America at that point was Hello. It's me. Oh, Adele. By Adele. Good. Damn, that was nine years ago. And then uh, this is a good one. So the this was the day, November 9th, 2015, that the World Anti-Doping Agency recommends Russia Federation be banned from all Olympic athletics due to running a state-supported doping program. <laughs> That's wild. We got the Olympics coming up this year. I'm pretty stoked for that. Yeah, I'm stoked for the— Xander Shoffley might win. Might, he might actually win one. Might actually dub. Uh, famous death— no, November 9th, 2015, Ernst Fuchs, an Austrian artist, dies at 85. Wow. It's probably Fuchs. What about... <laughs> but his name... It's not Can Otis. you imagine if your name was Ernst Fuchs? <laughs> Mr. Fuchs. Oh, my God. All right, let's play this clip from Melnani, getting our feels a little bit. He's holding his kid. What did you draw on coming down the stretch to become a winner out of this bunch leaderboard? I have no idea. I just... I told myself... I was going to do my best on every shot, and and that was what I did, and I was so nervous coming down the stretch. A lot of those shots, you kind of see it in the, you know, the approach in a 16 was terrible, but I was just, like, just, so you can't describe it. It's so cool. It's so cool to share it's it with Carson like, Wentz. He does look like Carson Wentz. <laughs> Maybe it's this just is amazing. Carson Wentz. It's just amazing. Call. He kind of has personal vibes. I mentioned that it's been nine years. Can you describe what that weight that has been like to get this second win and get to celebrate with Hatcher Dash and Alicia? Like, Dad, are you supposed I mean, to win? You, you wonder if you're ever going to do it again, you know, because it's hard. <laughs> and, you know, in the nine years since my last win, it's gotten a lot harder, too. Like, if you look, like, the level of talent out here, guys coming out when they're hard. You know, 20 years old and <laughs> so they're hard. ready to play on this stage and they're so good. It's just, I mean, you just, you just wonder, like, and so to have, to have this moment, oh, it just, it just feels so amazing. I mean, obviously, you know, my family believes in me. Um, Can we stop this? 
<laughs> I've got the best yeah, caddy. Let's talk about saying fucking nothing. Like shout out to Peter Malnati. Yes, though, because congratulations. It's just so, like, no. It's a that, lot. That made me laugh more than it made me get in my feels. It's it's a little it's just emotional. Like fucking, but when you it's think, just, <laughs> awesome, so cool, so nervous, like <laughs> like. But, my brother in Christ, of course you're nervous. You haven't won in a decade. Yeah, I like, think he's just said nothing of any value. Right. I think where it hits home just in general of golf is like the fact that he hasn't won in nine years doesn't. Everybody's it, it, fought the demons like that. Yeah. And th- that's his career. Like if, if you don't keep if you keep not winning, you don't just get to keep playing. You know, like <laughs> yeah. it's it's not like a, an NFL where you just sign a different contract, go to a different team if you're not that good. I mean, you obviously get kicked out of the league at some point. I think that's kind of how sports work. Like, well, you know, most just, sports, but you're bad. directly, like this directly just affected his next two oh, years. Oh, absolutely. Well, the cool part is, is he's going to play in his first ever Masters this year. Yep. Which is awesome. Like, yeah, that's to be a, 36 years old and qualify for your first Masters, I'm sure he probably had kind of thrown in the towel on the idea that he was ever going to qualify for a Masters again. So, yes, very happy for Peter Malnati. Um, real quick, can we pull up our blacklist? Uh, so we started this last week because I hate Tom Hoagie and I never want to see his face again. Uh, but I think Spencer has somebody to add to that, and I am on the bandwagon with this. We are adding to our blacklist after he he screwed us already once this year. Yes. Losing in a playoff. Yep. To Nick Dunlap. I had him that week, yep. and then I picked him again last week. At the players. Pissed down his had leg a great, on the weekend. Great Friday. Thought he could be in it. Pissed down his leg on the weekend. Won this tournament twice. Missed the cut. Sam Burns, you have been added to the blacklist. You will never, ever be bet on by or, the golf bros again. Probably good for you. You'll go yeah, win now. Yeah, exactly. We'll, let, we'll, let, we'll set you free. <laughs> we love you, so we'll set you free. That font's going to have to get smaller, though, because that, yeah, that this, list this is, is going to get fucking long. Oh, yeah. It's gonna that list it. is going to be three quarters of the PGA Tour. <laughs> we should just honestly make a fucking sheet of people we should bet on, and it's just Scotty Scheffler. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That that would be it. Yeah. Because <laughs> Cameron Young, if, if I would have had him this week, oh, I would have been a disaster. I would have been a disaster <laughs> again. Um, one real quick last note. Peter Malnati made $1.512 million on winning the Valspar. The last tournament he won, granted Sanderson Farms, eh, 748k so he won twice as much money winning in 2024 than he did winning in 2015 i mean yeah the purses have gone up when you win in a different decade yeah i mean cameron young who got second place still made 200k more than he would have made in 2015 yeah, winning a tournament it, what really like blew my mind when pj tour purses got so big was that guys finishing in like second and third place were still making over a million dollars like growing up the only the winner of these tournaments would make a million and then it would drop off significantly. So now you see like dude finishes third at a major and makes like 1.2 million. You're like, Holy shit. That, that's like insane. You don't have to win to make like $5 million on the PJ tour a year. Like the money is just the PJ tour may be the only job in America that's kept up with inflation. Yeah. <laughs> that's a very accurate statement. Like nobody else is getting those kinds of pay raises out here. It's fucking hard in these streets. <laughs> it's hard out here for us. <laughs> All right, let's finish it up with our mulligan of the week. So mulligan of the week is something that happened to us that we wish we could have a mulligan on. Mitchell, you want to kick us off this week? Yeah, um, so this happened. I'm a, I'm a Zen connoisseur, for those of you who don't know. No free shout-outs, but, you know, it's Zen's. Like, they're, they're not going to pay us, but they should. Because I'm pretty sure I should own stock in Zinn at this point. I should own a small portion of their company. Um, but I got a little frosted flaky. So when you open a can and you have one that's burst open and it's covering everything, um, it just gives you that extra little pep, gives you a little textural sensation. So it's always kind of a nice surprise. You're like, you you miss a pouch, but you've got that little salt floating around in there that you can do with what you'll please. Um, generally ingesting it one way or the other. But I had, so I had just salt sitting in the bottom of my can. I was a little tuned up at the time. Um, so I wasn't thinking 100% clearly. Had maybe a few too many Coors Lights. Shout out Coors Light. And I was looking in the bottom of my can. There's all this salt. And I just decided to blow on it. Like blow it out of there. Dumbest fucking thing I've ever done. Nah, well, this week. Um, right into my eyes, just nicotine salt into my eye holes, uh, right on my eyeballs. It was 
it burned. It was not a fun sensation. So I just wish, you know, when you just like make a snap decision, like in like a couple seconds for something that really shouldn't affect you very much, but then it ends up really affecting you. And you're like, wow, I should have thought that through. Oh, I um, three, four times a day. For me, <laughs> usually that's something that happens to me. Um, my mulligan of the week this week. So I last week was bringing a BLT for lunch. But I, I didn't have any bread, so I was just going to go. I just had, like, lettuce was my bread. I'm a, I am love lettuce as bread, so it was just going to be bacon, tomato on lettuce, on a lettuce wrap, essentially. I was salad? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's fucking... basically a salad. Okay, well, excuse real, real me quick, for not eating quick. fucking I, bread. I want to talk about this. Where do we, where does, where does a BLT land on, like, because I'm not a big BLT guy. Oh, I love them. I, I, when they, I'm, like, good with like the bread. They just feel like they're missing something. No. Like they, they're not a full sandwich. They don't. Maybe it's cheese. I'm such a big cheese guy. Maybe throw a little you, cheese on a BLT. You could I'd do that. It. I'm sure you could do that. But just a classic BLT, like lettuce and tomato, really don't have that much substance. Bacon kind of does, but you're like you're getting nothing. I feel like it's the least filling sandwich you can eat. Yeah, probably. But it's probably it's a fairly healthy sandwich if you're gonna eat a sandwich. Relatively. Long story short, I'm eating a BLT lettuce wrap. So I make the bacon at home, bring the lettuce from home. I'm like, fuck, we don't have a tomato. So I'm like, all right, cool. I'll go get a tomato at this fucking Choice Mart over here, which has been pillaged, it seems like. Every time I go in there, there's like two things on the shelf. So I buy a fucking singular tomato for $4, get to work, forgot the fucking bacon and the lettuce. <laughs> so I have, have this a fucking tomato. tomato sitting on my desk all fucking day. No BL, just T. And it was fucking unfortunate. Oh, and you remember to go get a tomato, yeah. but you didn't remember. I parked in a certain area, so I had to walk by the choice, so I'd remember to get the tomato. So you 100% thought that you had it with you. Oh, and yeah, it, absolutely. <laughs> and I opened my backpack, and I was like, oh, I don't have the B and the L. I'm out. I'm just going to eat this tea raw. I don't have the B, and I'm taking the L by <laughs> just eating the tea. <laughs> That's pretty good. Thank you. All right, Marissa, your mulligan of the week? Yeah, well, you saw it on Instagram pretty much. I, like... Did you see it? No. Oh, I fell down the stairs of my... Well, I was dragged down the stairs of my house because of my dog, but... Sounds like your dog has behavioral issues. He's really good at going all the way <laughs> down the stairs. Yes. No, he's not his no, fault. No, 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 no. We've trained him. We have trained him. It's not his fault. He chases the geese. Did you train him to pull you down the stairs? Well, so there's two things. One, Christian tells me all the time that if I'm going to go out in the snow, I need to wear good quality shoes. Because if that I don't, not rocket science. Well, you I don't. Should be doing that. I don't like having to change shoes, and I was wearing my Crocs. You so. wore Crocs out in the snow. Oh, yeah. I was just That's trying a fine to move. I was just trying to get downstairs. All right, sir. Thank you. That's um, like you might as well not wear shoes because they have so many holes in them. Your feet are going well, to be covered in snow anyway. That's not even the issue. There's no traction on them. True. So we're going down the stairs and it's like during that ice part of the storm yesterday or whatever. And so Dune did really good going down the stairs all the way until we got to the bottom. But there were two geese that were sitting out on the lawn and he just dragged me. And I thought should I just could, let go of the leash. See, that's a smart idea, and I should have done that. But, but I then literally, wouldn't he be like gone forever? No, he comes back. But I literally like <laughs> he like it was like a jet ski. He like took me, <laughs> and then I couldn't get like any like of my feet solid like on that the ground. Kind of traction. Where you're, just... you're like leaning back, getting pulled by something, and you're trying to like oh, dig your heels in. The snow literally. You, there were lines, and Christian the entire time is up at uh, like in our balcony video t- like recording <laughs> all of it and just laughing he, he knew chaos was coming he knew what he was didn't about want to miss that fire yeah so good I, on him for getting it on video i will never admit it to him did you I, like bust your ass you i really hurt your... my hamstring i literally thought i wasn't I, only, I went to the gym today and i had to sit there and stretch it for like 30 minutes because it hurt god damn so dogs man what are you gonna do it's my child not my dog no i'm just kidding <laughs> oh yeah we've been over this your dog mom, I get it. Yeah. Shout out Jokey. Speaking of dogs, third birthday yesterday. Yeah, so. my dog turned three yesterday. He's officially a old, like he's not a puppy anymore. Yeah. Two is puppy age, three is not. But he still acts like it. Yeah, oh, yeah. he's gonna he's, act like a puppy until he's like ten. Yeah, which is I'm fine. With. He's just got so much energy at all times. Just a lot, a lot. But I like it most of the time. It's fun. I feel like I wanted a dog that reacted. <laughs> like that was one of my like. You want like a jumpy dog? Yeah, I want like if you jump at a dog i I don't my old dog 
great dog, greatest dog ever, Sammy, but he would just like just stare what? at you. Like you couldn't get him to react. Now I do I fucking go with a little sniff on Jokey's in the ear and he's like, <laughs> like freaking out. So like that's so what just I, for the pleasure I like a reaction with it. Yeah, I like a reactionary dog. It's more that fun. That is the most out of bounds fucking description of what you look for in a dog that i've ever heard well that was i mean i enjoy it it's like, more fun that's like that way. basically like you should have just got a fainting goat that would have been cool <laughs> you can have dune he runs up and down the stairs 50 times when you look at him wrong so oh, there you go i, I don't wow well, no i'm not gonna say that um <laughs> all right wow, okay. that is going to wrap this pod up tune in wednesday we'll be live at noon mountain time 2 p.m eastern for our weekly episode of Big Drive Energy, we're going to talk about the upcoming tournaments this week and some other topics that we were going to workshop in the next few days. So make sure you have a good rest of your Monday. Go Iowa Hawkeyes. Go Cl- Caitlin Clark. I'm hoping for a rematch with CU with the same outcome this coming Saturday. Hawkeyes, Buffaloes, but I'm not going to overlook the Mountaineers, the fem- the Lady Mountaineers. We are going to the just, Mountainettes. just got to take... Take care of business tonight. Move on. Move on to the sweet Survive 16. in advance. Enjoy the rest of your week. We'll talk to you guys on Wednesday. Peace. Peace.